First Thessalonians 5, 21 and 22. Test everything. Hold fast to that which is good and abstain from every appearance of evil. Praise God. Steve Cameron here with you. And we are going to discuss. I hope we're going to learn. I learned something studying. Uh, let go and let God. This is a misconception, a uh, misconceived notion in the Bible that uh, it's a misperception that we perceive that we just let everything go and God takes care of it all. In this verse, it shows that there's two elements. There's holding on and there's letting go, not just letting go. Let go and let God to a, to a certain degree. And to only certain things does God say, stay away from or let go of. We gotta let go of our sin, right? We gotta let go of sinful behavior. We gotta let go of I idols in our lives, things like that. Yes, we have to let go. But even that letting go is with diligence. It is with our own volition. We have determined in ourselves. Because by God's grace, he has, through the Spirit, given us the power, right, to have that determination, to have that power. It's not just by our will, it's by, but not by our will or our might, but by the power of God, by the power of his word, by the power of his Spirit, that we're able to hold on and hold fast and also let go. But you hear this uh, spoken in, in many circles, and it has been for years, you know, let go and let God. You might even see a bumper sticker that says that. Let go and let God. Yeah, that's a little too general for my taste. And I hope that uh, we, we look a little further into the scriptures before we adopt uh, just some some you know saying some uh, i guess you want a hot point or uh clickbait so to speak it's like oh yeah oh yeah click on this and and all this other stuff will come up um and it won't be good you get you know let go and let god i, I was researching that and i clicked on let go and let god and uh, a lot of things came up definitely weren't scriptural it was the devil's clickbait you know um so some of these terms that we've heard throughout our lives, we just have to be really careful. Uh, the Bible tells us to study, to show ourselves approved. Uh, a, a person that works it, with the word, handling the word of God correctly. And that's what we have to do with some of these sayings. We have to put them against the actual words of God. And, and God, through many scriptures, although he did say, uh, you know, hey, the the battle belongs to the Lord. Stand, see, and stand still and see the power of the Lord. Right, to see the salvation of the Lord. Um, there's a lot of times where we need to stand still or let go. But but Paul, the apostle, he talks about the biblical uh, walk of the Christian and that it's a race. We're running a race. We're not just letting go. We're striving forward. You know, and and we are diligently seeking the will of the Lord, diligently looking uh, at our at our Christian walk. Be awake, be aware, the Bible tells us. Uh, Peter, first and second Peter, you know, we've got to be aware. Uh, Jude, be aware of false preachers. Ah, oh, just let go and let God, you know. Oh, so there's this this kind of thing coming into our church and they're allowing this now and they're allowing that. Just let go and let God. No, the Bible says <laughs> that you rebuke, reprove. The Bible is there for us to do such things. The Bible is there for us to lift up and also to correct. It's fit for correction. Remember that. And if something comes into the to, to the church that is not biblical and that is being a, or or something that's you know maybe a gray area, but it's being abused, uh, and and maybe somebody's saying that it is biblical when it really is not, we have to we have to be careful. We have to be careful. I, I I'm going to when we're going through these misconceptions and misperceptions, I'm going to make sure that I study to show myself approved so that when I share it with you, you know, that's why I'm sharing this, I'm sharing the scripture with you saying, hold fast, test everything, test everything. You know, the Bible even tells us to test the preacher. 
the Barians. They taught, they tested the preachers to, and, and went home and studied for themselves it's in the Bible, you know, and, and you can do that too. I'm up on the pulpit. The pastor's on the pulpit, assistant pastor's on the pulpit. They're preaching the word of God. You, we need to have our Bibles out. We need to have our minds engaged, our hearts engaged, our memories engaged of scripture. And, and we're listening to the word of God. And when we hear something that just doesn't seem right, they don't just, you know, yell out, Hey, that's not biblical and, and challenge the pastor or, or whoever's preaching right then and there. But, but study to show yourself approved. See if these things are true. Look in the Bible, and if you have a question about what context the sermon was about and what, what this pastor or this preacher meant in regards to this, talk to them. Ask them. Any preacher, teacher, minister, person who is, is you know working for the Lord in that capacity that is worth his salt for his title that the Lord has given him for his, for his ministry, if, if they can't accept being questioned they have no business being a leader okay and that's that's look man you if you're if you're not going to accept people questioning you then you need to question yourself with the lord you need to ask the lord to do am i doing am i in the right place am i doing the right thing because if you can't handle people questioning you possibly even mistakenly rebuking you and you having to come back with an answer. There's been times when I've been on the pulpit and I've said something and I I really thought it was clear. I really thought it was very easily clear, but it wasn't. It confused somebody or some several people. And I wouldn't have known unless somebody told me I was confused about this one part that you you spoke about. Can you please clarify it? And then we get the opportunity to do that so that we are listening to the word and hearing the word of God and it being explained to us properly so that we don't go around saying things like, let go and let God. <laughs> and then and then people say, oh, okay, I, then I determine that to mean when it's such a blanket statement. It's such a blanket statement and, and it can be misinterpreted, it can be misused. And so then we have this misconception and this misinterpretation of the Bible. Look, don't let go and let God. Unless it's an issue or an area where God says you need to let go. But where God says to hold and to stand and to be firm and to race and to run and to keep and to move and to do. then that's what we're going to do. And where God says to be still. And God says to keep your peace. And God says to not to do. And God says, let me take care of it. Then we'll look at the scriptures and see where. Look, just as much as we don't let go and let God for everything, right? We don't help God either. Right? Okay? So there's that, that walk. That walk in the spirit. That, that, and that walk in the truth that we must hold on to. That's not letting go. I hold on to the word. I hold on to my faith, to the faith. I hold on to the precepts of God. I just don't let go and let God. And I hope that you don't either. Till next time, may the Lord richly bless you. Digging deeper. Let go and let God or not. <laughs>